Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofinetta Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Grand Edge, the show where we talk about the interesting, most interesting decks to play around with. And today, we're going to be doing just that because uh, I want to start this month out with doing like a lot of kind of meme deck so let's call this trophy nuts official meme month and we're gonna start out with a very fancy squiretel deck that focuses on harmony yeah harmony you know that part of squiretel that has uh, long been assumed dead but today we're gonna be taking a look at the phillies triple waters deck so Phillies Triple Waters, what is that all about? Well, as I said, it's a harmony deck, so we're trying to play as many different species within Squiretel with cards of every single tag under the sun, aside from a few, of course, we don't include actually every single thing here. Um, but the focus of this deck is trying to work around a single play revolving the Waters of Broccolon. The Water of Broccolon is a nature card that spawns two Dryad Fledglings. Both of them have four power and harmony, meaning that they boost themselves whenever you play a Squirtel unit of a primary tag that was not on your side of the board just yet. This deck is called the Triple Water, so meaning that we can actually play Water of Broccolon three times um, with this card setup. How we're going to be doing that I'll show you in a minute when we go through each and every single card but if you kind of already know what this deck might be doing you can skip straight ahead to the example matches using the timeline down below and um, you can also find the link to the deck in the Playgrant website in the description down below so you can go over there don't forget to upvote as, as well because every bit of feedback is appreciated. Um, and will just help our channel uh, really, really grow. So, without further ado, if you're still here, we're gonna go through each and every single card in this deck from the bottom to the top. And we're gonna start out with a um, card that you don't often see played. So the Vryhead Saboteur has three power, and on deploy, if you put him on the melee row, he boosts an elf in your hand by two. Our main goal is to actually boost Philavandrel to 12. So that is why this deck is called Philly's Triple Waters. Because it's Philavandrel's Triple Waters. And Philavandrel is going to be one of the ways we're going to be spawning Water of Broccolon. We need to boost them to 12, so the Vryhead Saboteur can help with that, getting us closer to that 12. The next up is of course the only Dwarf in our deck, so we have two of these, the Pyrotechnician 4 power and 2 armor, and if you manage to deploy his order ability, he damages a random enemy unit and himself by 4, but of course the armor will take some of the damage, or if he's at 1 power he will just destroy himself. Then we have the Dryad's Caress, one single uh, pop of this card, a nature card where you purify an allied unit and boosted by three and if you control a dryad which will most likely be the case you also give that unit vitality for three turns so basically six uh, points and a purify which is gonna come in handy if we get targeted by a lock or something nasty like that then we have the trained hawk which is the i think the only beast in this deck so again we're looking for harmony tags this card has a harmony tag and has a pretty unique primary category primary tag that works out for harmony so tree power has a double ability so if you put him on the melee row he damages an enemy unit by two if you put him on the range row you can move an enemy unit to their other row and of course the harmony means that every time you play another squiretel unit that has a unique tag on the board you boost this card by one as well. So all of them will start functioning as engine cards as well. Next up, the Dryad Ranger tree power as well also has harmony and on the ploy damage an enemy unit by two and give it poison. There's a very small poison package in this deck so you can take out one very big target and in that we have two Dryad Rangers and there's one more poison card just to round out uh, three poison cards just in case you lose one of course. And the Half-Elf Hunter also starts at 3 power, has Harmony, but on deploy he also spawns an Elven Deadeye in this row. So he starts at 6 points in total, but is also an engine that works with Harmony. Next up is the Cat Witcher. Uh, the Witchers were actually a good addition to the Harmony archetype, because the Cat Witcher allows you to play a Witcher, which is a unique tag as well. But 4 power for 5 provisions, and at the end of your turn you move self to the other row, and damage a random enemy unit on that opposite row by 1. So you keep doing this every single turn, and if you only have 3 cards or less in your hand, that damage is increased by 2 one so it is increased to two damage in total every single time you end your turn then we have the dwarven chariot which is also a very unique card so the dwarven chariot four power and one armor for five provisions on the ploy you spawn a rowdy dwarf in this row so again that's two powers so you get six points in total 
It also has an order ability where you give an allied unit one armor, but that's not what we really, we are really here for. It's just that the machine tag is really unique uh, for this card in this faction. So you'll always trigger all the harmony on the board when you play this. Then we have two circles of circles of life. You can use those to also boost Philavandria, so damage an enemy unit by three and then boost a random Squirtel unit in your hand by two. If you uh, kill a unit, you can choose which unit that is. So that's what we're aiming for. So we can boost Philavandria to that very, very fancy 12. Then of course a double nature's rebuke. Uh, I think most of the Squirtel decks try to do this to have a little bit of removal. So damage an enemy by five. And if you kill it, you damage, um, you boost a random ally to three and by two. So possibly seven points with a bit of removal. Then Ciaran or Kiaran, I don't really know how to pronounce that, but Kiaran Ep Esnilin is another L for five power and six provisions. And on the ball, you lock a unit and also move it to the other row. So again, a bit of removal um, for this deck because otherwise it doesn't really have that much. Then we have Percival, Percival Schuttenbach, uh, four power, two armor uh, for seven provisions, but it's the only card that has harmony two. So meaning that he will boost himself by two every time you play a Squirtel unit with a unique primary category. Then Sirsa, another Dryad with the harmony tag, four power and you damage an enemy unit by two. And if you kill an enemy unit with that two damage, you also boost a unit in your hand by two. Again, trying to put that on Philavandrel if he is not yet at 12. So this means that we have eight options. We have one more card that will be able to do four boosts and another card that will be able to resurrect a nature card from our deck. So you could technically play Circle of Life three times. Um, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Then rounding out our poison package is the Weeping Willow. Uh, functions as a tree ant with harmony on top of also being able to poison an enemy unit. If you can't poison an enemy unit, you can also be put on the melee row and gain a shield instead, which is also also very useful of course to protect your engine capabilities. Now next up is the card that makes this deck a triple water deck. So we can play water just by the card itself. We can play it from Philavandrel if you can put them to 12. But then you can use Alyssa Hansen, this lovely neutral card to shuffle a special card from your graveyard to your deck. So putting Water of Brooklyn back into your deck and then you can use uh, Fall to pull it back out again. So that is the way we can play Water of Brooklyn three times, making this the uh, triple water stack. And there she is, four of a Dryad, two power, and basically functions as a nature card tutor, so you can pull Waters of Brooklyn from the deck with this card, which is going to come in handy really, really nicely. And as in Grim's Council is another tutor that basically allows you to grab the card that you're still missing. Like for example, if you're missing um, Fov, you can use that to then pull Waters of Brocolon out. You can also grab a dwarf if you don't have a dwarf yet, so one of the pyrotechnicians. Or of course the uh, elves, which is most likely going to be um, Italin. We're going to be talking about Italin in a minute, but uh, she's going to be the most important card if you don't have her in hand just yet. And we have Barnabas Beckenbauer. I kind of forgot to say that with Percival as well. Percival is a gnome, so gnome is also pretty unique. There's only two cards, I think, with the gnome category in Squirtel, and Barnabas is the second. Barnabas has gotten a really good buff. Um, I I think it was the 9.4 patch uh, where his boost was increased by one so he uh, now boosts by three for every boost that he applies he starts at six power and on the boy you boost an allied elf dwarf and dryad unit on the board by three so if you have one of each on the board this card is a whopping 15 points on top of most likely also triggering harmony on uh, most of your cards because um, first of all usually gets removed because of his strong harmony ability so if he's gone then barnabas is the second Gnome, but there's no gnome on the board so he's a unique tag on the board so functioning really really well as a finisher and then italin we talked about her before but now we can uh, delve into it a bit more so six power and boosts the squirtel unit in your hand by four when you play her she counts as an elf not that unique in this deck but there's also not that many in this deck so you are pretty guaranteed to pull her with isn't Kim's council if you haven't got her in your hand just yet so uh, very good to put on Villavandrel if you put uh, Italin on Villavandrel you only need to boost him twice uh, with the other cards to get him up to 12 which is the ideal situation of course yeah we have force protector five power is a triant which we only have two of and on the boy you play a bronze nature card from your graveyard so this was the card that I was talking about with the circle of life technically you could play a third circle of life if you need it otherwise of course this will go to nature's rebuke to get 
get a 12 point hit if you kill something with it because that two point boost is most likely going to go on the force protector as well so again very powerful card that gives you a solid 12 point swing if played correctly and now we have Philly himself, so Philavandriel and Fidel. Four power for 12 provisions, and on the ploy he creates and plays a Squire Tell special card with a provision cost equal to his power. And that is why we're trying to aim uh, to 12 uh, power, because if he is at 12 power, you are guaranteed to play Waters of Brokilon if you play him on the melee row. Um, if you can't get him to 12, you still can put him on the range row to play a lower card. Or if you know what you're getting, like for example, at 10, you can also play Call of the Forest, which can be very, very useful um, and play another Squirtel unit that way, possibly triggering Harmony twice. But Philly, most of the time, we're going to be trying to aim for Waters of Broccolon. And then, of course, the card itself, we talked about it before, but spawn two Dryad Fletchlings in the row that you select, uh, giving you eight points in one go, but both of those have harmony, so giving you basically a two-point engine every time you play something unique afterwards. And then the final one is our stratagem. This is a bit of a peculiar choice, but because of our deck, the way that it works, we really need Philavandriel in our hand. So Curse Scroll allows us to do that. On order, you draw a card of your choice and then put a card from your hand at the bottom of your deck. So basically allowing you to definitely have Philavandriel in hand when you start. And then our leader ability, of course, is Call of Harmony, where we spawn and play Dana Mehab. And she is a seven point relic. So, relic is pretty unique and no longer completely unique, because uh, with the addition of Torque, we got a second relic in uh, Squirtel right now. But she also has Harmony, so also just functions as an engine card, which is really, really good. So, she triggers Harmony on every card that is there and also has Harmony herself. So, really, really powerful indeed. So, it might seem that this deck is not as powerful as it looks, but against the current meta where you face a lot of Nilfgaard and a lot of uh, Skellige Reckless Flurry, this deck is actually pretty good. So uh, let's head into a few example matches and hope that we find opponents like that to just showcase this really, really nicely. So next up is actually Monsters, our uh, first match against Monsters here, the Araka Swarm. That might actually be interesting. Um, we do start, so I usually prefer to not start, because that means that we uh, kind of can use our first rounds to just hang back and relax. Um, but now we really have to see that we get the good boosting cards here, because there's only one hand booster just yet. And that's Philly, okay. That's actually good. Um, I can use the Curse Scroll now instead to get Italin in hand. So Italin is 4, so we need another hand booster afterwards. Um, and we don't have the Waters of Broccolon here, but that doesn't really matter at this point. Good start might be the Pyrotechnician. Um, and then I'm going to use the Curse Scroll to get Italin in hand. And get the Vrahead Saboteur at the bottom of the deck. Although I don't have a second Poisoner either. No, Vrahead Saboteur goes down. There we go. Pretty okay start, I think. But against Arca Swarm, the dwarf isn't gonna do much. And then we get a portal in an Arca Swarm deck. Okay, just going for the big points, apparently. I could actually try to do it. Because I have Alyssa now in hand already, so I can actually boost with Fall into Waters of Broccolo. Do it like this. I could have actually used the Pirate Technician there as well, but Natural Selection, of course, hits the, um, the, the Dryad immediately. I could just use Italin now. Italin is an elf. We don't really have a lot of other Harmony uh, engines in hand right now, so I can just use Italin and get Philavandra up to 8 and trigger... A, uh, I'm always want to say Assimilate, but it's Harmony. So Harmony once, and then we get Royal Decree. Ooh. Royal Decree on a Griffin. I don't know. I don't want to see what their hand is at the moment. That sounds really good. Um, Alyssa is going to be the next one. So I'm just going to put the Cat Witcher down. That also triggers Harmony and gives us a bit of damage. I'm going to trigger the Pirate Ignition for some extra hits as well. So now we're just dealing one damage every single turn. So if there's another natural selection, it's bound to come out right now. Now our opponent is deciding and it's becoming maxi, so that probably means that they're trying to set up 
their deck ideally here. So uh, let's put Alyssa down and put the Walters back into our deck. Setting up our um, second Walters, so to speak. And now we actually, we actually have an Elf, a Dwarf and a Dryad on the board. So if you really need a big point boost, we can get uh, Barnabas on the field. But if I don't need to, then I'm gonna hold off. We got actually hit by Hideous Feast. Um, I could use one of the poisons now. The reason for that is, so that's five points, that gives us um, 28 and the um, the cat which is still uh, jumping around. So that can still do damage as well. And if they're afraid of the poison, then they will most likely pass. Or they're gonna parasite the uh, dryad. Ooh, reset. Oh, you're really certain of the fact that I don't have a second poison, do you? Hmm. My hand is a bit awkward now. I, of course, don't want to use Barnabas because that's just so many points. The Cat Witcher also doesn't do enough just yet, so I think I'm just going to use Kiar in here. Uh, so let's just lock uh, Maxi down, put it on the other row. It really does, doesn't matter, but now our Cat Witcher does two points every single turn. So our opponent really needs to play a bit more than... And actually, they actually need to play seven points if they want to be certain. And they got one, two, three. That's going to be glusty. Oh, wow. Okay, then. I mean, that was clear that that was going to be glusty, but holy shit. Um, I do still have two harmony cards on the board. And I have one of each. So that is 15, 16, 17... So 9 is 15, that's just going to be 17 points. I could use my leader ability now, and I think I am going to. So leader ability into um, Dana, which triggers harmony on those two dryads, and then Barnabas into uh, this, this, and this, and that gives me another big point boost, so now we're 10 points ahead. And there we go, there's the pass, okay. Okay, fair enough. A bit greedy from my end, maybe, but with uh, Philavandriel and Walters of Brooklyn back in the uh, in in the deck, we should be able to work this out. Uh, we can always Circle of Life. Oof. Okay. We really need a nature card, so I'm gonna get rid of the trained hawk. The Dryad Ranger is good for the poison, though. But I really need that. Um, that hand boosting first isn't games council not bad actually that's a really good hand so let's pause there well, it's all gonna come down on that final round we do have Arakas drones on special cards so we should have targets for Sirsa on the hand boosting and we need a single circle of life because uh, we're not gonna get that fra oof, oof. nice nice so we get the waters of Broculon okay and we get a circle of life as well so that should be enough we have Dryads, we have a Gnome, Tree Ants, Machine. It's actually pretty good. But the only thing we don't really have is Double Poison. We can get one with Isengrim's Cancel, but otherwise we don't have a good option, but we need everything else. Uh, so let's quickly check. I could get the Weeping Willow, but that's too risky. Uh, so let's just finish redrawing over there. We can get another dwarf with Isengrim's Council there, but that's basically going to be it. Unless we use Isengrim's Council to get that Vryad Saboteur, but probably not the best option. Mamuna in one go. Okay. Um, I do have two more hand boosts aside from Circle of Life. So I think I'm just going to start with Circle of Life in the sense that that might already give me the boost, but the chances are 20%, so that's no good. Um, but I can get another one with um, Forest Protector, so I'm just going to do this. We'll try and see what our opponent does. That actually boosted uh, Percival. So starting out pretty slow. The problem is, if our opponent doesn't play a organic card anymore, but I'm assuming Parasite is at least somewhere over there still. Or Nature Selection or something like that. Ooh. Okay, interesting. Uh, so pretty passive play there. Um, they don't have Arakas drones anymore, so if they want to do Predatory Dive, they really can't. So I think Waters might actually be a good start here. So Waters of Broculon, giving us our double Harmony engines again. And then we might actually get hit by a... Yeah, there it goes, a Natural Selection. 
So that gives us a good target for um, Sirsa. So Sirsa is now going to head for two on Whisper's Tribute. And then we're going to boost Philly to 10. So we're going to see the triple waters in action, in action at least. At the very least. And there's a Parasite coming in. Um, uh, let's do Percival first. Percival boosts the Dryad Fledgling again. And then we get Oneromancy onto a lock. A lock. Okay. Very aggressive. I need to, need to do that circle of life now, right? Um, although, if I get lucky with Isn't Games Cancel, I can actually get the Vryhead Saboteur, but. Yeah, the Circle of Life is something I'm going to have to play regardless. Uh, so I'm going to just use Forest Protector onto Circle of Life onto the drone. And then boost Philly to 12. So we're still 13 points behind, but we're going to circumvent that in one go with our next, um, our next play. Uh, so we're 20 points behind now, but this uh, completely circumvents that by us doing Walters of Broculon, and we are one point ahead now, even. So that gives us three Harmony Engines. Uh, we do get hit with Imlerith's Wrath on Phil of Vandial, so that's a hefty 12-point hit. And now I'm going to have to see what the most efficient play is. I think since Phil of Vandial died, I don't have another Elf on the board. So if I can get the Half-Elf Hunter... Yes, that's another Harmony card. So that gives us... An extra tick on the machine in a minute, so we're equal now. And I'm gonna play for 10 next. And we get banished, so that means that we won. That was actually pretty close, but there we go. One, two, three, and we get one point ahead. There we go. Triple waters in action against Argos Swarm. That was pretty nice. And then for our second match, we're actually facing Squiretel ourselves, a movement deck. That might be very interesting. Um, I'm going to have to see if we can actually win against this. I've never played this matchup before. But we do have a pretty good starting hand. We have Philavandriel in our hand as well, which is always very nice. I'm going to keep the Circle of Life. Dwarven Chariot might not be that useful just yet. Scatwitcher either. I can play without that. Um, we also start with Walters. So the only card we're still missing is Alyssa, uh, if you want to play that way. Um, let's get rid of the Dwarven Chariot as well, because we're not going to be needing it. Although I can use it. No, let's swap it for something else. Try its caress. Okay. We also don't start this time, so we can actually play a bit more conservative. I've been incredibly unlucky with Nature's Rebukes. Because I could... Oh, there, there is only one in this deck. I kind of forgot about that. I thought there were two. Never mind. We also don't have the Hawk, so I can't move that uh, Smuggler to the other row. So this first match will be pretty limited. Um, could play Ismgrim's Council, but that's really risky. So Vryad Saboteur, Omphila Vandriel. And there we go. We, get, we actually get hit by a trained Hawk there. Which sadly was already boosted, so it's not 3, uh, three power anymore. Um, and I must say we don't really have a good option here. Um, so I am already going to spring for Waters of Broculon, I think. Even though I don't have Alyssa in hand. Unless I try my luck with this in Games Council, which, which could help. I'm going to try. We don't get lucky, but we do get poison. But the poison isn't going to help. Yeah, because that uh, smuggler is veiled. Um, so it's going to be the Half-Half Hunter then. There we go. At least one Harmony unit on the board. So the benefit to not starting um, with this deck is that you can just play until your opponent is uh, at 6 cards. And then just stop. Um, which is probably what I'm going to do. Because um, I really don't have a good play here. So let's use Circle of Life on the um, Hawker Smuggler. And that boosts the Forest Protector, sadly, and not Villa Vandale. But yeah, again, that was 20% chance, so tough luck there. And then we get 5 with a nature card. Isn't Games Council immediately? 
was pretty hefty dunk out, so I'm definitely gonna pass now because I can't remove either of those hand boosters. So uh, there we go. And that's something that you can do. So our opponent basically overplayed quite a bit, but they still got some hand boosting out of that. And they're actually gonna keep going. Morena Runestone. So that's Circle of Life. So that's another bit of hand boosting. The carryover is gonna be insane. <laughs> Yeah, so that was an extra card that definitely wasn't needed. Unless they're gonna pass now immediately, which is probably what's gonna happen, but that allows me a little bit of setup as well. Um, we get a Ranger. So now we got a Poison Pair. The chances of a Purify existing are real, so I'm gonna get rid of my own Dryas Caress. And then we get Italin, that's really good. So that means that we have enough tools to actually... Um, Get Philly up to 12. But I think I'm gonna get rid of that Harmony, that Dryad Ranger here, in the hopes of getting Alyssa. And we don't, we get Circle of Life again. Okay. Um, I can use the Trained Hawk now. So hit the Hawker Smuggler. And our opponent will most likely not want to go further than that. Yeah, there we go. So that means that we can use uh, Circle of Life on the Hawker Smuggler and boost Philly up to 8. And we still have one more card that we can play. So we're going to use Italin and boost Philavondale up to 12 already. So we're absolutely certain that we have two Waters of Broculon in the final round. And possibly three. So if I can get my hands on Alyssa Hansen, that would be really sweet. So no. No, and no, but it's not over yet. We're gonna want to get rid of the Pyrotechnician. We get a Nature's Rebuke. That is actually pretty good. I don't need the extra hand boosting from Cersei anymore, but she is a pretty good card. Although I need the Death Blow to get something out of that. I'm actually gonna get rid of Cersei, because I can use the Nature's Rebuke with the Force Protector. So Cersei out. Oh my god, this can actually work. So Waters of Broculon one and we get nature's rebuked on that first one and the second one is destroyed but that's not too bad where our opponent actually used their leader ability for that um, so we can use Alyssa Hansen to get that waters of Brooklyn back into the deck then we get the half elf hunter so that is a harmony unit for our opponent now we can use Fov to get that water of Brooklyn back and play our second water of Brooklyn we get a second half half hunter. Um, but yeah, and now we play Philavandrel to play our third Water of Broculon in, uh, yeah, about four cards. So that is really cool. I love that combo. Um, now I could technically play um, our leader ability, but I'm gonna wait one more time. Because uh, I wanna get Percival down before we do that. So now we got Simnals. Simnals is probably going to do double natures. No. Double Bountiful Harvest. Well, we might have to do a little bit of a detour to um, tree and, um, the tree and special. But we'll see. So we got the first Bountiful Harvest is going to go on to... That's a Dolblatana Fire Bomber lady, right? The two damage. And then another one. Okay. So that could actually kill one of the... Um, oof. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. They might actually use a leader ability to kill one. Yeah, okay. That is absolutely fine. So now use Percival Schuttenbach. That triggers Harmony. And then we use our leader ability and put Dana on the front row as well. Triggering more Harmony all the way. Harmony all the way. So they're stacking their row. So I'm pretty sh sure they're gonna have... Um, what's his name? The, um, the, the, you know, you know who I'm talking about, the, uh, the Witcher guy, Gasgals, um, flipping back and forth. So I'm going to use an Aegis Rebuke first now, so I can get rid of a few of those units in the back. Next up is going to be the Cat, Cat Witcher itself, uh, just so I can get advantage of that adrenaline as soon as possible. That's also going to trigger all the uh, harmony again. And then we get Torque. Fair enough. Cat Witcher down on the front row. So he starts flipping back. But yeah, that gas rods I'm not going to be able to stop. 
is that gas gas must have gotten a serious hand boosting as well as except for okay so Gaetan is going to move everybody to the front row now I'd actually hit the armor once so that wasn't as strong as I might have thought I could do the weeping willow next although it probably doesn't really matter because I can't kill anything with the um, with the force protective Except for when I do Circle of Life. The Circle of Life is also just 5, so that's not going to matter all that much. So let's use the uh, Weeping Willow and just try and make them scared about the poison there. And that's two more damage going in. And now we get a Cat Witcher. So that's going to basically do the same thing. They might actually hit mine. They don't. Okay, that's good. Uh, I can't kill that Cat Witcher either, so I'm just going to put down another... Forest Protector... Here. There we go, here. Um, I can use Nature's Rebuke now, because I can actually kill Torque in this state. And that gives us... Quite an advantage here. And now we get Vernossiel. That is a weird card in that deck. So they seem to be going for pure... Um, point Slam? Um, so Barnabas is going to be 12. I'm not going to be triggering any more uh, of the... Harmony, sadly, but it is 12 points, so pretty good nonetheless. We're 20 points ahead because our opponent is also going to do 2 damage again. So 20 points. Is our opponent going to do 20 points? The rightmost unit is not going to be enough. There we go. And they did kill our Cat Witcher there at the very end. There we go. Philly's triple water is killing off a lot of his... Um, yeah, fellow Squire that might be a bit weird, but there we go, the power of this deck demonstrated in full. So I think that was more than plenty to show off the combo that this deck is built around. It's not the most consistent. There are options to make it a little bit more consistent. You could swap, swap out the Force Protector for Call of the Forest, but again, you really want to get um, Philly in your hand, so that's what the Cursed Scroll is for. Um, Call of the Forest would only give you like an extra Italian or something like that. So I feel like this setup is just a little bit better because you have one, uh, well, two units for most categories. So you have a couple of elves, two gnomes, two triads, um, a couple of uh, dryads, one beast, two dwarves, a witcher, and a machine. So that's most of the the, um, the unique tags. The other option that you could technically add is Saskia, so you could remove the Force Protector, lose one of the three ends, but get Saskia in return, which who has the Dragon tag. Um, and the Dragon category is just something completely unique in this deck then. So you have one Dragon and one three end. So that's another trigger for your Assimilate, but it depends on what you want. I feel like the Force Protector gives you a bit more versatility and you might not have the Weeping Willow, so giving that extra three end for free on top of that. So again, the basic combo is if you start out um, you're gonna probably lose that first round. It's really hard to keep the first round unless you already uh, sacrifice one of your waters, which is definitely an option to do, uh, especially if you have Alyssa in hand. Um, if you don't start, you can just boost Philly as long as you uh, have him in hand and just boost him up to 12 and then pass at the moment that your opponent starts to get a bigger lead. And then, of course, you put the first waters of Brooklyn down, you put that back in your uh, deck using Alyssa, then you pull that back out with Fov, and then you use Phil of Andriel for that third Walters of Brokilon, and then you have a lot of harmony on the board to just keep slamming all the other categories on top of, um, starting out with your harmony units, of course. The link to the deck uh, on the Play Gwent website is in the description, so you can check it out there. Uh, import it, don't forget to upvote it as well there, and uh, the game plan um, we just explained, so you will. Uh, not really need any more explanation after this i'm assuming and that's it for this deck guide let me think what let me let me think let me know what you think because i'm really curious what you uh feel about this deck if you feel like it's uh good enough to uh get you a few wins or if it's just um yeah if, if there are things that i can improve on this let me know and uh, i'll gladly continue the discussion down below in the comment section so thank you enormously for watching and uh, the next deck guide is going to be just as spicy. So thank you enormously for watching. And I hope to see you in the next video, the next episode of Gwentage. Goodbye and stay nutty.